Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. By Howard Pyle. Inspired by the stories and legends of a famous outlaw from the 13th century, novelist Howard Pyle produced the novel Merry Adventures of Robin Hood, which became famous in Nottinghamshire. However, despite the lack of evidence that Robin Hood was an actual historical man, his tales have been popular with readers for years. There are 22 chapters in the book, each detailing a different exploit of Robin Hood and his merry men. Despite the fact that they were outlaws who engaged in several illegal activities, they are depicted as heroes who stand up for what is right. The character of Robin Hood is sometimes shown as a moral compass, selecting who should be punished and how they should be punished. Even though he is a lawbreaker, he is a good man who cares about the poor and works to right the wrongs they experience at the hands of those with more resources and influence. His entire team is on board with his views and approach. When Robin, an 18-year-old outlaw, inadvertently murders a stranger and finds refuge in the Sherwood Forest, the story begins. He assembles a band of brave and righteous young outlaws to stand with him against the injustice perpetrated by the wealthy. The story is broken down into chapters, with each chapter depicting a new adventure for Robin Hood and his band of merry men. Throughout the book, the author frequently addresses the audience as he recounts several events, generally with a healthy dose of comedy, which adds to the story's overall appeal. The book's cheery tone makes it acceptable for younger readers, but the main character's death is an unexpected plot twist. Robin Hood and his company are described from their first union all the way to them falling apart, which lasted for many years. It was at this time that they corrected many injustices, aided the needy, penalized the wealthy, and evaded all charges filed against them. A circuit plot structure is evident in this novel since the crew is reassembled and disbanded in the forest at the conclusion, reverting to their former position of being outlaws. After all, if not for Robin Hood's demise, which is detailed in a final epilogue chapter, the story would have ended happily with the king's admiration for Robin Hood and his friends and their restored reputation. During Henrik II's reign in Nottingham, England, Robin Hood and his merry men lived in the Sherwood Forest. Outlaw Robin Hood was popular because of his eagerness to aid those in need. For his 18th birthday, he chose to compete in an archery match sponsored by the king, hoping to win a keg of beer. He encountered a group of folks who were mocking his belief in victory as he made his way. They bet on his archery skills and lost, trying to hit him with an arrow, but Robin manages to get away and even murder one of the intoxicated archers. His life as an outlaw and a thief was over after that. He was also suspected of being a deer poacher, and his head was valued at $200. The sheriff of Nottingham decided to capture Robin so that he might collect the reward money and avenge the murder of his cousin, an archer who Robin had killed in a duel. As more outlaws began to congregate in the forest the following year, Robin was soon chosen to head them. For the sake of justice, they've decided to steal from the wealthy and donate to those who have been harmed. While crossing a bridge, Robin came into a man who was also looking for a fun adventure. There was only room for one person on the bridge, and no one wanted to step aside, so they decided to engage in a duel. That's why Robin offered him a position in his group, christened him Little John, and made him sit at Robin's right side during the dinner, assigning him the duty of his most important assistant. In addition to issuing a warrant for Robin Hood's arrest, the sheriff of Nottingham offered a sizable reward for any information leading to his capture. There was no one prepared to betray him in Nottingham, so, the sheriff sent a courier to Lincoln to find someone who would be willing to speak with him about Robin. It was at a tavern that Messenger decided to take some time off and tell some of the patrons about his quest to find Robin Hood. This group's men pledged to help find Robin Hood, and one of them set out the following morning thinking it would be simple. A Robin Hood appeared soon after, but he didn't recognize him, so he listened to his tale of an evil and cunning Robin Hood who was capable of stealing his warrant. As a result of their trust, the man went to a nearby pub where everyone knew Robin, where he grabbed his warrant and left them to pay for all of the bills. They met again, and Robin Hood offered him a position in his company, which he accepted. When the sheriff learned of the occurrence, he immediately determined to punish the messenger by handing down a death sentence. To the king's displeasure, he requested help in ruling his region, but the monarch refused. In an attempt to elude capture, the sheriff decided to hold a tournament with substantial cash prizes. Because he was aware of the sheriff's plot, Robin Hood chose to enter the competition while disguised. Sheriff was sad that Robin had withdrawn, but the masked contestant quickly drew the attention of the entire room. After winning the event, the sheriff personally presented him with a prize that included an offer of employment and making fun of Robin Hood's archery skills and calling him a coward. 
It was masked Robin's decision to reject the sheriff's offer, and he even wrote him a message to let him know that he was the grand prize winner. Infuriated, the sheriff dispatched his forces to the forest in pursuit of Robin and his people, who had decided to take a break from fighting for the time being. It took a week for the sheriff's men to realize that they were dealing with one of Robin Hood's men when they saw Will Studley emerge from a nearby bar dressed as a monk in pursuit of some information. As a warning to the others, they carried him to Nottingham to hang him, but Robin and the men came to rescue and defeated the sheriff's army as well. Sheriff gave up on trying to convince Robin after being duped three times. After a year of tranquil life, Robin and his firm met a butcher and acquired all of his meat, deciding to sell it at a local market on his own. Because of his low prices, other dealers invited him to a lunch with the sheriff, who got suspicious of him. The sheriff didn't know him, but he tried to fool him by offering to buy off his trade for a low price. Robin led him to a forest, where his men ambushed him. To regain his freedom, he was forced to pay a hefty price. If he ever tries to deceive anyone else in the future, he should remember what Robin had taught him. Night tournaments were held once every five years at an organized fair. As a result of the lackluster prize, Robin Hood chose not to participate, but Little John did, and he came out on top. Little John accepted the employment offer from the sheriff since he didn't recognize him. Little John became fatter and lazier after a few months of living the high life. After a confrontation with the servant over breakfast, who had refused to serve him, he went to the pantry on his own and got into another altercation with the cook. The chef's rage at the Little John was fueled by the accounts of the servants, but they were able to work things out and Little John even offered the chef to join the company. As they made their way back to the woods, they brought with them some of the sheriff's silverware and cutlery. There is no way Robin would have sanctioned this theft, therefore they had to return all of their stolen property. Little John was tasked by Robin Hood with procuring the group's new green clothes, but he instead headed to the pub. When Robin decided to go in search of him, he ran into a deer poacher in the woods and began following him. When the poacher ran across Little John, they got into a battle, and the poacher won, earning himself an offer to join their group. They come across a guy dressed in expensive clothing on their way back and beg him to give them all of his things. It was soon discovered that the nobleman had requested Robin's protection and participation in their group since he had slain one of his father's slaves. Because of the color of his garments, Robin Hood suggested that he rename himself Will Scarlet. It was only when they ran into the miller that they realized that the Robin Hood and his gang were protecting him and tossed some flour in their faces as a warning. Miller was initially skeptical of Robin's claim until the rest of the group arrived. The group planned a spectacular party to welcome all of the new members, and he was invited to attend as well. When the group's funds were running low, Robin decided to send a few of them out to find a party sponsor. It was only after a long search that they discovered a young man who was wailing. Alan Adale was a traveling singer who fell in love with a girl who had been promised to another man's lover. He joined the company because they promised to assist him in marrying the woman he loves. They were motivated by Will Scarlet to seek out Friar Tuck, who would marry them, and extend an invitation to him to join the group. Robin, dressed as a singer, interrupted the wedding ceremony on the day of the wedding to reveal that the groom had a bride who was in love with someone else. The groom initially refused to let her go, but when she offered to pay him, the father of the bride agreed. While hunting for wedding guests, Robin came across Richard the Knight. Since all of his possessions had been pledged by the church as a security of payment due to his son's murder at some tournament, he refused to take part. In the presence of the bishop and the friars, Robin informed them all about the awful fate of Knight Richard, and asked for the bishop's help, but he hasn't responded. To pay off Sir Richard's obligation, Robin gathered up all of the companion's money and presented it to him as a loan, which Sir Richard accepted. Little John and Robin Hood set off early in the spring dressed as friars and beggars in pursuit of an adventure. Different paths were taken by each of them. He helped some women carry their bags and then went to the pub, where everyone bought him drinks and heard him sing. Little John made fun of the two genuine friars who arrived to chastise him for his bad behavior, which made everyone else laugh. Robin, on the other hand, had made the decision to trade his garments for a supper with a beggar. Dressed up, he set out in search of a new experience. However, the group of four beggars he encountered soon revealed their unique signs, one said his owner was deaf, another was blind, the third begged for money, and the fourth was impoverished. A group of people invited him to eat with him, but after hearing that Robin Hood was from Sherwood, the conversation turned to whether or not they would ever visit the area because they were terrified of him. They were carrying a significant amount of cash in a nearby town, but they were only pretending to be impoverished in order to avoid detection. Eventually, 
They became suspicious of Robin as a spy, so they assaulted him, but he defeated them all and took their money. When Robin was looking for another adventure, he encountered a rich man who was initially rude to him because he thought Robin was poor, but when he saw his money, he chose to travel with him. In spite of Robin's warnings to hide his money in his shoes, Robin went up to the man and robbed him as well. Richard Partington, a Queen's envoy, arrived in Sherwood and asked Robin to join him in London for the tournament. To tell the Queen about his exploits, Robin brought along Little John and Will Scarlet, as well as Alan Adale. During the tournament, the Queen informed the King that she would send the country's best archers to compete against his guards, who were regarded as the best. But when Robin and his pals triumphed, King was furious, demanding another match but losing yet again. In spite of the king promising the queen that he would grant Robin and his troops a 40-day reprieve, he dispatched his men to capture Robin, angered by the bishop and his own defeat in the tournament. Richard Partington was dispatched by the queen to alert them, and they were able to flee. For a long time, the queen's guard searched for Robin and his companions. Eventually, Robin returned to ask for the queen's protection and support. King Richard was making his way around the country and was scheduled to stop in at Nottingham. Robin Hood was referred to by the sheriff as a common thief, so he attempted to learn more about him. As a result, the evening was filled with laughter and delight as everyone discussed Robin. The monarch made the deliberate decision to go undercover in order to catch the thief, Robin, off guard. Because the monarch regarded Robin with such high regard, he invited him and his crew to join the royal service. The company's post-runaway lifestyle is depicted in the epilogue. Little John and Will Scarlet returned to Nottingham after spending a few years at the royal castle. For his service to the monarch, Robin was given the title of the Dutch of Huntington and became a fighter for the king. Alan and his wife were always by his side. When Robin returned to Sherwood, the king's son, King John, sent his army to try to persuade him otherwise. In the end, the king's troops were defeated by Robin's group, which also killed the sheriff. Robin was suffering from a fever, so he went to see his cousin for aid. When she learned he had re-emerged as an outlaw, she was terrified, so she pretended to help Robin while he was bleeding to death. Alan Adale, Friar Tuck, Sir Richard, the Bishop and Sir Richard Partington are some of the characters in this tale of Robin Hood. In reality, Robin Hood is the leader of the group of outlaws who are battling injustice, robbing from the affluent and giving to the poor, as well as the inspiration for the novel's title. After he accidentally kills a guy, he ends up in the Sherwood Forest as an outlaw and a fugitive. In the jungle, he joins like-minded individuals, young guys with a penchant for violence who had also become outlaws for a variety of reasons, and the two of them set out to fight injustice together. To catch him, they had him participate in a competition, but he won it by wearing a mask and even had a business pitch from the sheriff, which he turned down. He also misled the sheriff several times, putting himself at risk of a severe vengeance. Finally, he was exonerated of his treasonous crimes and entered the king's service, where he enjoyed the high life. After some time, he chooses to return to the forest, where he used to live with his cousin, and ends up committing suicide there. When it comes to finding Robin Hood, Sheriff is always on the lookout, but he's duped time and again. Robin's cousin was the victim of his vengeance, and it was another another reason for his rage. No one wants to betray him after he declares a warrant for Robin's arrest. Sheriff's men were sent in quest of Robin Hood, who usually manages to elude capture. Throughout the story, Robin continually ridicules and humiliates the sheriff, until he is killed. In every adventure, Little John is Robin's right-hand man and the only other character who stands out. While the group refers to him as Little John, his given name is actually John Little. He enlisted with the organization following a confrontation with Robin on a bridge. In an instant, he becomes Robin's right-hand man faithful assistant, and best friend. Because of his success in a competition, he was offered a position as sheriff, which he held for several months, during which time he became lethargic and put on weight. Robin and his companions are always by his side until the very end, so he returns to the forest and serves the king with the rest of the group. A young man named Will Scarlet, a distant relative of Robin Hood, seeks the guidance of his uncle after killing a man. However, Robin initially intended to attack him since he thought he was a rich guy and thus conceals him in the forest. In order to keep him safe, the firm changed his name from Will Gamwell to Will Scarlet, after the color of his garments. It was banned for Alan to be with his sweetheart, but the corporation he's working with lets him reconcile with her by stopping her wedding. American novelist, illustrator, and teacher Howard Pyle deserves a lot of credit for his many pictures for stories, fairy tales, and adventure novels.
Pyle was a multi-talented individual. On March 3, 1853, he was born in Wilmington, Delaware, to a wealthy family. At the end of 1876, he left Philadelphia and relocated to New York City, where he began working as an illustrator for the magazine. He moves back to Wilmington in 1880. A notable example of his work may be seen in the Book of Robin Hood, which features his illustrations. His Brandywine School of Art was attended by prominent artists like N. C. Wyeth and Maxfield Parrish after he completed his education in illustration. It wasn't long until he was illustrating every book out there, but at the same time he was also writing and drawing. He married Anne Poole and had seven children, all of whom are now adults. On November 9, 1911, he passed away in Florence, Italy. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video. Music